Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I am Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with the reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A van from Hyundai, the Steria 2.2 CRDI GLS Plus 8AT, and a subcompact SUV from Volkswagen, the T-Cross SE. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two midsize SUVs, the Mitsubishi Montero Sport Black Series Rally R Tradition against the Toyota Fortuner GRS 4x4 AT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about reading and understanding a dyno chart. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the Ford Ranger Raptor launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Hyundai. The Hyundai Star arrived late last year with much fanfare as the successor to the popular Hyundai Star X. This car review checks out one of the three variants of the Staria made available locally, the 2.2 CRDI GLS Plus Automatic Transmission. When Hyundai Motor Philippines formally relaunched the brand of the local market in August of 2022, it rolled out two new models of the all-new Creta, a B-segment SUV, and the Staria, a premium banner MPV along with the refreshed models in its local lineup. The Steria immediately caught the attention of the MPV and van market with its futuristic design in an interior with the latest tech and trendy creature comforts for VIP. The Steria doesn't look like the vans already in the market and should stand out with its low belt line and tall stands. Hyundai rolled out four variants of the Steria. The 7th year 2.2 CRDI Premium Plus 8AT AWD the 11-seater 2.2 CRDI GLS Plus 8AT, the 2.2 CRDI Commuter 6MT, and the 3-seater 2.2 CRDI Cargo 6MT. This car review takes a closer look at the 11-seater 2.2 CRDI GLS Plus. Like the Premium Plus and the Commuter, the Hyundai 2.2 CRDI GLS Plus 8AT is 5,253 meters long. 1,970 millimeters wide and 1,990 millimeters tall. The wheelbase is 3,273 millimeters long and the Steria clears the ground by 186 millimeters. Those dimensions as well as a unibody construction and front-wheel drive layout allow the Steria to seat 11 passengers in comfort in the GLS Plus variant with lower floorboard and taller interior height. But more on the interior later. The fascia with a unique grille, bumper, and headlight design concept. The GLS Plus features LED multi face reflector headlights with auto light control, LED daytime running lights, position lamp, bulb type rear combination lamps, and fog light. The body color side view mirrors power adjust and fold and come integrated with turn signals. Like the CRDI commuter, the GLS Plus comes with body color outside door handles. 
sliding rear doors on both sides, and a manual lift tailgate. The body color front grille adds rather than subtracts from the Staria GLS Plus futuristic look. It also shares the reused spoiler with a high mount top lamp found in the top three variants. The GLS Plus comes with 17-inch alloy wheels. One gets into the Staria GLS Plus conveniently with a smart key and button start. The GLS Plus comes with leatherette seats that look both posh and comfortable. There's ample shoulder and leg room from front to the back. Up front are seats for driver and two passengers. The seats recline with a driver benefiting from a height adjuster. The multi-purpose design of the front passenger seat includes a portable center console that makes room for a third passenger when raised. Right behind them is a bench-type seat for three which splits 60-40. Two independent seats are in row three. The final row features a bench set for three that easily slides to create extra luggage space in the back. All seats behind the driver can be folded flat to allow for more cargo space. The leather-wrapped steering wheel on the GLS Plus tilts a telescope and comes with controls for the audio system, Bluetooth, with voice recognition as well as conventional cruise control. The 10.25-inch TFT LCD sits on the dash to display for all the relevant info he needs on the drive as well as blind spot view monitor. Front and center is the 8-inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system with AM FM, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that plays through four speakers and two tweeters. The display also is for the surround view monitor when parking the vehicle. Underneath the touchscreen display are the controls and buttons for such conveniences as the air conditioning system. Other comfort and convenience features in the DLS Plus include central door locks, wireless charger, USB chargers on the front tray, seat and luggage side, power windows, overhead console and room lamp. The Staria is powered by a 2199cc CRDI VGT DOHC 16-valve engine complied with Euro 4 emission regulations. The engine generates 177 PS at 3800 revolutions per minute and 430 Nm of torque from 1500 to 2500 RPM. In the GLS Plus, the engine is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission that sends power and torque to the front wheels. The Staria powertrain also comes with drive mode select from Eco, Comfort, Smart, and Sport. Unibody construction also allow for a more comfortable ride with a suspension that uses McPherson struts with coil spring in front and rigid axle 5 link with coil spring in the back. The brake system uses 17-inch discs on all four wheels. Hyundai also equipped the Staria GLS Plus with various safety and driver assist features that include anti-lock brake system, hill start assist control, electronic parking brake with auto hold, manual speed limit assist, and tire pressure monitoring system. It also comes with parking distance warning, forward and reverse, surround view monitor. Added for safety are dual front airbags, side and curtain airbags, child seat anchors, child lock, and three-point seat belts. Many believe the Starks helped make Hyundai a trusted brand in the country. The Hyundai Star has the look, tech, and features that should attract families looking for a cool and comfortable van. The latest auto industry news and development right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill.
Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. The Covenant Car Company Incorporated has launched the new generation 2024 Trax, making the Philippines the first Southeast Asian country to get the crossover SUV from Chevrolet that is now making waves in the US, Canada, Mexico, and South Korea. At the launch, TCCCI President and CEO Alberto B. Arcilla touted the new Trax as bigger, bolder, more refined and featuring Chevrolet's revolutionary design philosophy while pioneering technologies to set new standards for crossovers in the country. Also at the launch was Ernesto Ortiz, President and Managing Director of General Motors Strategic Markets, Alliances and Distributors, who expressed confidence in the local success of the new generation Trax in collaboration with TCCCI, Chevrolet's trusted partner for Chevrolet in the Philippines for almost 14 years. Manufactured at the General Motors plant in South Korea, the 2024 Chevrolet Trax is powered by a 1.2-liter three-cylinder turbo DOHC VVT engine that delivers up to 137 horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque and is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. The new generation 2024 Chevrolet Trax is available locally in three variants. The LT, retailing at 1,793,888 pesos, the red line at 1,866,888 pesos, and the RS at 1,948,888 pesos. The Toyota Gazoo Racing Vias Cup, the country's longest-running one-make circuit racing series, has returned for another season, starting with the first leg held at the Clark International Speedway. Open to the public for free, the event drew hundreds of motorsports fans to the track to cheer on their favorite drivers and teams as they race on the track using Vios sedans lightly modified for safety. Aside from circuit racing series and the autocross challenge, this year's TGR Vios Cup added new features to spice up the season. And we have a new format that we are introducing this season. So we'll have the endurance race that we are going to witness on the third leg of this season of Vios Cup. Toyota also rolled a race-ready Corolla Altis GRS HEV as the pace car for the first leg of the TGR Vios Cup. We have seen the Corolla Altis GRS HEV. That's our very first electrified race car that we have developed for the Toyota Gazoo Racing Vios Cup. In true Toyota Gazoo Racing fashion, we are testing it and subjecting it to a motorsports environment. And that's the way we can further develop our cars, which will lead us to make ever better cars. So who knows, maybe in the next legs or in the next seasons, we can open up new racing classes exclusively for electrified cars. Those who missed catching the races live and in person at the Clark International Speedway can still do so at two more scheduled legs. So we have prepared very exciting and thrilling activities for Toyota Gazoo Racing Vios Cup this year. So if you miss this leg, this first leg, don't worry, because we have two more, one in September and the third and final one in November. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Who said happiness can only be found on the ground? Next generation Ford Ranger. Do the undone. Reserve yours now on Ford.com.ph or at your nearest Ford dealer.
Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. Automakers have always leveraged success in the field of motorsports to selling their vehicles, adding flourishes here and there, racing vehicles and kits, and sometimes actual racing gear or powertrain to special edition variants. Mitsubishi has its Rally Art Motorsports division, which has gained for the brand renown for toughness and high performance in the World Rally Championship and the Paris Dakar Rally. For Toyota, there's Gazoo Racing, which has teams competing in the WRC and other motorsports events. Mitsubishi has rolled out a special edition variant of its popular mid-size SUV called the Montero Sport Black Series Rally Art. Toyota has also launched and imbued its equally popular four-tuner with the spirit of Gazoo Racing called the four-tuner GRS 4x4AT. The Mitsubishi Montero Sport is 4,825mm long, 1,850mm wide, and 1,835mm tall, with a 2,800mm long wheelbase and a 218mm high ground clearance. The Fortuner GRS variant is listed at 4,795mm long, 1,855mm wide, and 1,835mm tall, with a 2,745mm long wheelbase. The Montero Sport Black Series Rally Art comes in either white diamond or jet black mica with accents and garnishes all done in black. Blacked out are the grille, headlamp extension, front and rear bumper garnish, the rooftop itself and roof rails, the spoiler, the shark fin antenna and the 18-inch alloy wheels. The Rally Art Edition comes in stripes, accents and decals and graphics as well as mud flaps in Rally Art colors or logos. Movement sensors at the quarters of the rear bumpers allow hands-free raising and closing of the powered lift gate. The Ford Tudor GRS comes in a host of Gazoo Racing-inspired design accents, starting with the GR badge on mesh-type front grille, with a bitone finish and the GR Design 18-inch alloy wheels with a machine-cut finish wrapped by 26560 or 18 tires. It also features body-colored backdoor garnish outside door handles, split-type LED headlamps, and LED daytime running lights with line guide, sequential front turn signal lamps and front fog lamps, rear LED combination lamps with line guide, sequential signal and bulb light, black and chrome door belt molding, front and rear mudguards, roof rails, and blacked outside view mirrors with welcome lamp that power adjusts in full. Additionally, the Fortuner GRS boasts of a power tailgate with kick sensor function for hands-free operation. The Rally Art Edition contains much of the interior comfort and convenience features of the Montero Black Series Rally Art. The Montero sits 7 and seats upholstered material that looks and feels posh. The front seat slides and reclines with the driver's seat also adjusting for height. The second row seats for 3 splits and fold 60-40 and features a fold-down center armrest. The third row seat for 2 splits 50-50 and can be folded flat. The wide central console and armrest comes in twin cup holders. This is also where one finds the electronic parking switch as well as the auto hold button. The Montero Sport Black Series Rally Art also comes with a new 8-inch color LCD instrument meter display. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features buttons and controls for the audio, the multi-information display, as well as the adaptive cruise control. The automatic climate control system features rotary dials, digital meters, and a nano-e air purifying system. Other standard covered convenience features include keyless entry, front accessory outlets, power windows, auto dim day, and night rear view mirror. The Fortuner GRS features the GR badge on the leather-wrapped steering wheel, which tilts and telescopes and comes with paddle shifter and controls for the multi-information display and cruise control. The cabin comes with suede and leather upholstery for seat and trim, as well as smoke, silver, metallic, matte carpet, and red stitching accents. Driver and front seat passenger enjoys 8-way power-adjusting seats. The second row seat for 3 splits 60-40 slides and reclines and comes with one-touch double function, as well as center armrest. The third row seat reclines and splits 50-50. Other comfort and convenience features include smart keyless entry and push start system, dual zone auto climate control as well as power windows with auto up down function and jam protection, speed sensing door locks, power tail kit with kick sensor, glove box, cold box, 10 cup and bottle holders, room and door courtesy lamps, and two 12 volt accessory outlets. The Montero Sport Black Series Rally Art also features a multimedia entertainment system with an 8 inch display, Apple CarPlay added auto compatibility, hands free voice control, GPS navigation system, 1 HDMI and 2 USB connections, 6 speakers. The Ford Tudor GRS infotainment system comes with an 8 inch display audio, Apple CarPlay added auto, smart device link, as well as AM FM radio, Bluetooth and USB, voice command, as well as a JBL 9 speaker system. The GRS also touts wireless charger and two USB charging ports in the rear, as well as two 12-volt accessory outlets. 
The Montero Rally Art Varies is powered by a 2.4 liter Mivec diesel engine with variable geometry turbo generating 181 PS and 430 Nm of torque in the Black Series. It is made into an 8-speed automatic transmission that drives the rear wheels and comes in sport mode and paddle shifters. The suspension system features front double wish modes with coil springs and stabilizer bar 3-link coil springs with stabilizer bar at the rear. The Montero Sport brake system is equipped with ventilated discs on all four wheels. Powering the Ford Tuner GRS is a 2,755cc 4-cylinder inline 16-valve DOHC diesel engine with variable nozzle turbo and air-cooled intercooler that generates 204 PS and 500 Nm of torque. This is made into a 6-speed automatic transmission and a 4x4 drivetrain that comes with differential lock with auto disconnect function. The GRS also comes with two drive modes, Eco and Sport. The Fortuner GR suspension features monotube shock absorbers for the double wish boats up front and the multi-link system in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs and all four wheels along with the GR brake calipers. The Montero Black Series Rally Art is equipped with such active and passive safety features as Forward Collision Mitigation System or FCM, Adaptive Cruise Control, Active Stability and Traction Control or ASTC, and Ultrasonic Mix Acceleration Mitigation System or UMS, among other advanced automotive tech. Other standard safety features include trailer stability assist, hill start assist, anti lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, multiple airbags, 3 point ELR seat belts for driver and all passengers, isofix, and tether anchors. The Fortuner GRS is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense, an advanced collision prevention system that includes pre collision system, lane departure alert, and adaptive cruise control, as well as blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. It also features anti lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, vehicle stability control with traction control, hill start assist, 3 point ELR seat belts for 7, seat belt reminder, and pre tensioner and adjustable seat belt anchors for driver and front passenger, child restraint system using Isofix and Tether anchors, child lock in the rear doors, the Toyota vehicle security system featuring immobilizer and alarm. Zoom UX. Take the lead. The Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Life comes at you fast. If you're brave enough, drive right back at it. Brave the big city or the great outdoors. Brave the carpool or the extra cargo. Brave the unexpected with Honda Sensing. Brave the long road with fuel efficiency to reach your destination. The all new Honda BRV. Brave the next level. Welcome back to Auto Focus the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Ford Philippines launched the next-gen Ranger Raptor during the first day of the Ford Island Conquest Year 6 event held at Arca South in Taguig, where people had the chance to see and experience driving Ford's popular pickup as well as other members of the Ford lineup around a specially designed course test its capabilities to the fullest. Thrilled to be here today at the launch of the next generation Ranger Raptor. Uh, and really, the, today just kicks off the, the first of our sixth annual Ford Island Conquest event at uh, Arca South. So for any customer that wants to come out, you can not only experience the next generation Raptor, but you can also experience the, uh, our, our Ranger Wild Track, uh, Everest, Titanium Plus, as well as the all new Ford Territories. <music> the 
the features are, are really too numerous to mention, but what I might mention is really what the features do for you. So first, you can certainly see the enhancements to the exterior of the vehicle. Uh, in addition to that uh, increased size on the technology, the, the screens inside, you have a 12 and 12.4 inch screen as well as a 12 inch screen. Those screens really enable technology. So the 360 camera, not only what you're used to as far as a 360 camera, but also a top down feature for the camera. So those are just a couple of features. The big thing that the customers will experience at Ford Island Conquest is what it feels like to drive in the Ranger Raptor. So customers can experience a combination of the wider stance, which contributes to a smooth ride, which is incredible. Also, certainly the suspension with the two and a half inch box shocks add to just the overall comfort of the vehicle. So it's really kind of a combination of, yes, a ton of new features for the next generation Ranger Raptor, but what those features do and mean to the ride is what customers will experience here at the event. So the pricing for the next generation Ranger Raptor is 2,339,000 pesos. It's really ideal. And the best way to really understand the value of that price is to experience the vehicle. So we have five colors available on the Ranger Raptor. So it really to satisfy what any customer would be looking for. And uh, this is one primary variant that has the two liter engine. The good news is Ranger Raptor, as we've talked about, really has, has helped to establish the foundation. So as far as Ford, if you think about the next three to five years, think about the products that we've brought to market. So with the next generation Ranger, next generation Everest, next generation Territory, the next generation Ranger Raptor, the future looks bright. So we feel great about what the opportunity is. We feel really good about what customers think, how customers feel about the Ford brand. And certainly, you know, we're enhancing that. You ask about three to five years. All of the vehicles I've mentioned actually have a five-year warranty on them. So customers can you know, assure that they've got a comfort level, that not only are they getting a great vehicle, they can have great peace of mind with a five-year warranty on our next generation products. We'd love to have customers come out to Ford Island Conquest here at Arca South. Uh, as I said, you can experience these vehicles in whatever way you're comfortable. Certainly on the off-road course with the next generation Ranger Raptor, certainly 4x4 Everest and 4x4 Ranger. But if you're not into off-roading, that's okay. We actually have a drive course, on-road drive course, where you can experience our 4x2 products as well as the next generation Territory Titanium or Titanium X. So come on over, hang out with us for a little while. We've got an air-conditioned space inside, lots of cover just in case it rains, and it won't impede your ability to fully experience our vehicles. Designed and engineered by Ford Performance, the next-gen Raptor arrived with a reliable, powerful, and efficient powertrain, smart technologies, and advanced safety features, a commanding exterior look, and upgraded interior comfort and convenience that gave testimony to Ford's claim the new top-of-the-line pickup raises the bar in both off-road and on-road performance. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota we go. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fixed Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fixed Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily ride or weekend racer with all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers.
Fixed Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services, as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fixed Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Service. Ready? Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This edition of Car Review takes a look at the Volkswagen T-Cross SE decked out for 2023. Mm -hmm. Volkswagen Philippines started this year's campaign for the T-Cross by rolling out new colors, McKenna Turquoise, Pure White, and Moonstone Gray. In addition to Syringa Violet, Tribu Yellow, and Romance Red, the new colors are meant to emphasize VW's wish to paint the T-Cross as a subcompact crossover SUV for the hip and trendy crowd. The colors certainly succeed in making the T-Cross attractive to the younger and more dynamic generation. Nevertheless, at 4,218 mm long, 1,760mm wide and 1,599mm tall. And with a 2,651mm wheelbase, the T-Cross with less quirky colors can be described as elegantly handsome with straight sharp lines in profile. The front bumper, air dam, skid plate add sporty to words that can describe the T-Cross. As do the roof rails, the front fog lamps with corner light function, the rear spoiler. For 2023, the T-Cross SE still features LED headlights but now with auto on function. Also featured are daytime running lights, rear fog lamp, electric outside rear view mirrors with side turn lamps, panoramic sunroof, 17-inch alloy wheel strap by 205-55R17 tires. The T-Cross SE is also equipped with the what Volkswagen calls the Cassie Entry Go system that allows one to get into and start the T-Cross with key fob and pocket. <laughs> Volkswagen likes to point out that the T-Cross is a subcompact SUV with compact segment interior dimensions. The T-Cross cabin is certainly roomier than many of its competitors. The interior panel and trim is colored match to the exterior which adds to the youthful appeal of the T-Cross. The seats in the SE use a combination of leather and fabric upholstery with stitching that also matches exterior colors. The front seats still adjust manually, six ways for the driver and four ways for the passenger. The rear seat bench folds to create more luggage space if necessary. The raised seat feels comfortable, especially with the well bolstered bucket seats up front. From the comfort of this race bucket seat, the driver can get all the information he needs from the active info display that can be customized, as well as a good view of the road in front and around him. Also within view, front and center of the center of the dash is this 9.2 touchscreen display of the T-Cross infotainment system that comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and four speakers. The infotainment system can be controlled using hand gestures, as well as controls on the multi-function steering wheel. In front are USB Type-A and Type-C portals for charging and Apple CarPlay connection. Type-A and Type-C ports are available in the rear but only for charging devices. Other comfort and convenience features include air conditioning with pollen filter and rear vent, one touch up and down power windows, and central door locking. Driving the T-Cross seems almost effortless, especially with the electronic power steering tuned for those who prefer it light. The T-Cross is powered by a 1,498cc four-cylinder engine that generates 113 PS and 145 Nm of torque. A six-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with sport mode sends power and torque to the front wheels. Volkswagen claims the T-Cross can go from 0 to 100 km per hour in 13.3 seconds. Top speed is placed at 185 km per hour. The T-Cross cabin is relatively quiet, riding on a suspension system using independent front McPherson struts and semi-independent composite torsion beams in the rear to absorb road imperfections. Stopping power comes from a brake system using disc on all wheels, ventilated in the front, solid in the rear. The T-Cross also comes with passive and active driver assist technologies. These include anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, hill hold control, anti-slip regulation, and electronic stabilization program. Equipped for safety or driver and front passenger airbags, side airbags, head curtains, 3-point ELR seat belts, and Isofix tethers. 
rear parking distance control and rear camera make it easier and safer to maneuver into narrow slots and crowded lots. Finally, the Volkswagen T-Cross also comes with immobilizer and tire pressure monitor. There's more than the new colors that should make the Volkswagen T-Cross SE more attractive to the younger or even the older generation. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney from Speed Lab and today I'm going to teach you how to look at a dyno chart, read and understand it. Spend enough time on the internet and online and you'll probably come across one of these when talking about performance numbers. This is called the dyno chart and this is the most effective and straightforward way to prove that something makes power or not when it comes to engine modifications. A dyno chart basically tells you how much power and torque your car makes. That's it. It's very simple. It does not tune, it does not add power, it does not do anything except measure the power, horsepower of your car. It's basically a glorified treadmill for the car. So in every dyno chart, there's always two axes. One is the x-axis, which is always the RPM of the car being measured. So in this case, it's a Montero, so it's from 2,000 to 4,300. Then the y-axis here has horsepower and torque. For the Dynapack dyno chart, they split it into two. But later, we'll review another popular dyno chart that you keep seeing, which is from DynoJet. So these lines represent the number of runs in one dyno session. For the Dynapack one, each file can contain up to six runs, which is represented by these six colors. We'll start with the horsepower side. Which that's what everybody keeps asking, and that's what everybody sort of understands a little bit more. The first run is this red line, which is almost always here the baseline power, which means car comes into the shop, nothing has been done, we put it here, we take a power reading of what it is. Whether it's stock or slightly modified, it's called the baseline because we haven't done anything yet. Then subsequent runs, obviously the expected is you should get more power, which is why you're having it dyno tuned in the first place or having modifications done. And this is our second run. This is. Uh, a historical one which we already did a few weeks ago with the uh, ECU reflash. So from here, you can see the peak power at stock is around 155, which is indicated here. This is our power after reflash, which is 181. Note that the RPM is pretty much the same, 3,400 RPM. So that's the correct way to compare power actually or anything. It has to be on the same RPM scale. Then this is what we did just now with a full exhaust installed. So we're up to 219 horsepower for this old 2009 3.2 Montero. Torque is the same way. You read the graph here. So with diesels, it always starts off high, then goes lower. But as you can see, we have a pretty big, almost 150 foot pound of torque increase here from 312 to 446. That's pretty big, considering, just for reference, your average 7.8 only makes 100 foot-pounds of torque. Most people always quote when they get into these internet arguments is, Oh, my car makes 100 horsepower because that's what the brochure says. You are only partly right. It's 100 horsepower at a certain RPM. Like for this Montero, when people ask how much power did you make? Oh, stop, we make 155 at 3,500 RPM. This is important because if you look at the chart here at the bottom, you're only making 120 horses at 2,250 RPM. This part and this part almost nobody mentions. And here, towards the end of the RPM graph, you're actually only making 90 horsepower at red line of a diesel Montero. This is the number that everybody's most interested in, but this only tells part way of the story. Because here we have pr practically 155 to 218, that's a little about 65 horses. But at here, if we take these two points, it's actually closer to 60 horsepower. What you're most concerned about is the area in between the two charts that you're looking at. This one here. This is only one point, but you have to take the whole chart and the whole dyno as a whole. Same thing with torque. 
it starts off big, then gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you go down to red line. So next time when you want to argue with your friends, you should always ask, okay, horsepower at something RPM. It always has to have that because power by nature is defined as work over time. Torque is the work that you're doing, the amount of force that you're giving. Power is time, meaning how much force you apply over a period of time. And that period of time is from 2,000 to 4,300 RPM. And the M in the RPM is minutes, so revolutions per minute. That's your measure of time. So power always has to have a length of time and the time component in between. It cannot just be, it's not a static thing like, oh, I make this much power now. Yes, and, but what about a second later? What about five seconds later? Okay, that's for the Dyna chart from a Dyna pack. The Dynapack is actually a brand of Dynamometer. The same way that you have an Orion brand ruler, you have a Century brand ruler, and a Stanley brand ruler. Different dynos have different brands, but they all measure the same thing. It's horsepower. And then this is another type of dyno. This is from DinoJet, which is you also see a lot on the internet. And this is their dyno chart. As you can see, it's also the same. You have RPM here at the bottom. You have power here at the Y-axis. But you have torque here at the other y-axis. What they do is they intersperse it with each other. Same thing also, you can have multiple runs represented by multiple colors. So this is two runs. Uh, first run is red, second run is blue. So this is the line for power, these two. Then this is the line for torque. Same thing also, there's a pointer here that you can put here and the values here will change. Also, maximum power at, it will show you here, 180 and 146 mm, horsepower at this RPM here, at 6,000 RPM. Then it will show you also max torque, which is somewhere here at 5,000 mm, RPM. So once again, you read it the same way, power at RPM, torque at RPM. And as you can see, when you're only at 2,500, you're only doing about 20 horse, then it gradually gets bigger, 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 until red line. Same thing with torque, this is a gasoline engine, so your maximum torque is made somewhere here in the middle. So some torque, some torque, some torque, big torque, big torque, then torque drops off. Now, are there other brands of dinos in the Philippines? Yes, there are. If your car comes with a printout from one of these, it is unquestioned what the numbers are. Okay, so that's how you read a dyno chart, whether it's from DinoJet or DynaPack. And if you go to the SpeedLab Facebook page, I do post a lot of these things. This one, sometimes this one, because we do have a DinoJet also. And with the correspond explanations, what these lines also mean. So yes, check it out, so you, you might learn a thing or two. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.